Hello everyone, this is Dr. Lennon, and uh, I'm going to walk you through a pretty tricky problem. This is chapter 8, number 5, the last one. We've got uh, this ice cream shop that uh, uh, sells ice cream, and uh, we've got a bunch of data on it. So if you open up the web file, um, we have the data here. And uh, uh, the first part, uh, the scatter plots, I think most people are uh, okay on that. You're not going to have a difficulty. <coughs> you just go to insert charts, recommended charts, and then choose the, uh, for the first one, you're going to do a time series, and the second one, you're going to do a scatter. What I really want to look at is the two regressions. Uh, the first one is not bad. You're just doing sales uh, as the dependent variable and temperature as the independent variable. What I want to look at, though, is per C, the multiple regression equation. Because if you notice, when we look at this data, there's a bunch of the, the shop is open for eight hours, so not only do they want to use the temperature as the uh, as a variable, but they also want to use eight dummy variables for each hour that it's open and use that as a predictive measure in the model. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is, it pops up later because you need to have the, uh, the temperature to the right of sales because I'm going to put all the hours here. So I'm going to just right now uh, cut this data and move it on the right side. So uh, this is the first variable, and then I'm going to put the other variables after it. So I'm going to call it um, hour one, hour two, hour three, hour four, hour five, hour six, hour seven, and hour eight. And you'll notice what's going on is this hour column, it has eight possible values. It's open one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, five to six, and so on. But there's a ton of data here. There's like 55 things, and I don't want to have to fill it all out. What the problem wants you to do is it wants you to create a dummy variable. Um, so the dummy variable is either on if it's that time of day, one, or it's off if it's a different time, zero. So what I want to do is I want to fill these out so that they're on if it's one to two. This one would be two to three, three to four, and so on. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to use a pretty neat conditional trick that we have in um, Excel. So it's called a conditional statement. So what I do is I hit equals and I do if. And it's going to check if a condition's met. And if the condition is satisfied, it returns one. And if the condition is not satisfied, it'll return zero. So this is how you do it. Um, I'm going to put this in here. And the test is I'm going to check if this cell, B2, in this column, is it equal to the statement? And here's the tricky part. You have to type the statement exactly right. So 1, P, M, capitals, everything matter. So 2, P, M. Okay, so that's the condition. If that cell has that statement, I'm going to put a comma, it will return 1. And if it doesn't have that statement, I'm going to put a 0. And I hit Enter. Notice it puts 1. And let me fill down. So notice, everywhere it doesn't say that, there's a 0, and everywhere it does, there's a 1. And now I want to do that same statement, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it. Okay, then I'm going to go to this cell, and I want the same statement, basically, except for I want it to be from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. That's it. This one, I want it to be the same statement, but I want it to be 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. and so on for each of these. This one I want to be 4 to 5. And I want 5 to 6. And I want 6 to 7. And I want 7 to 8. down rather.
Okay, so as you can see, that's a nice condition. It would have taken a really long time to fill all this stuff up by hand. <coughs> but uh, now we have everything. So let's take a look. What do they want us to do? We have these eight hours and we have the temperature. So we just want to run the regression model. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, I go to data and then the solver. Oh no, I want the, uh, I don't want the solver, I want the analysis here. Data. There should be something else. Data analysis. Let's check. Let me go to File, Options. Check my add ins. Somehow the analysis tool pack was turned off, so let's put it back. Alright, now we have data analysis. We want to do a multiple regression. The y variable comes first. That's the sales that we're trying to predict. So these values. And then the x range is all of these. And remember, I had to move that one over, so we have that value right there. And we run the regression, and we get all of our parameters. So these are all the coefficients they want us to enter. So let's maybe see if we can get it so we can just type them. So the sales is this one. And how many decimals? Three decimals for each one. So we start off with 21.834. Point four five zero minus five point two three three minus five point six seven two uh, minus six point two nine two minus seven point four zero three minus 5.069 minus 5.488 minus 7.286 and 1.929 Alright, so let's check and see if we did okay on that. Sure, we got all the parameters. So that's good news. Uh, based on the model, how do we estimate uh, sales from 2 to 3 when the temperature is 93 degrees? Well, that's all that means for us is, because um, basically when it's 2 to 3 with this model, that's our number 2 up here. So we're doing the sales plus this 0.45 times the temperature, and then our 1 is 0, our 2 is 1, and the rest of them are 0. So then it's just minus 5.672 times 1. So that's the formula. So um, it's going to be, again, it's going to be equal to uh, this number plus 93, the temperature, times the temperature coefficient. And then we just add the hour 2 coefficient. Equals, we get 57.993. It says round to two decimal places, so 57.99 should work. Let's check that one out. Great. Now we just want to do the MSE, so let me remind you how to do that. Um, the MSE, we need to forecast it, which is going to be a little tricky. We need all these coefficients, so let me copy them, and we'll go back to the data, the data sheet right here. So um, the MSE is where we have to do the uh, the forecast and the error and the square error. So let me copy these here. I have all my coefficients now. So the, to get the forecast, again, it's a little co it's a little complicated. But essentially what we're doing is we're just um, using the formula that we answered previously. Um, so the forecast is going to be equal to, and now the thing is, I'm going to do the this number. But the thing is, as I fill down, I don't want any of these coefficients to move. I want to keep the chart static. So in order to do that, every time I use a chart value, I need to put a dollar sign around the letter. So I do a dollar sign plus, and then I'm doing this coefficient, and I don't want it to move, so uh, I need to use the dollar signs here, on this S, and then um, I want to multiply it by the hour value, and it's actually easier probably just to type them in, so then I do plus dollar signs S4 times um, 
G2 plus dollar signs S I times H2 plus dollar sign S6 times um, I2 plus dollar signs S7 um, times J2 plus dollar signs S8 um, times K2 plus dollar signs S9 um, times L2 Oh, you know what? I messed up a little bit because the first, uh, I just noticed the first coefficient should be the temperature, not H1, so I messed that up a bit. So all these S's should be shifted. The first one should be 2, and the second one should be 3, then 4, then 5. Oh, no, the S's were okay. It was the letters I had wrong. Sorry about that. So it should be... So the first one is S2, and the second one is S3, and the next one is S4. Okay, so the S's were all fine, um, but the letter shouldn't have been F, it should be E, because I need to start with temperature, and F, and G, and H, and I, then J, then K. Okay, now I've got two left. Alright, so plus S10 times L2, and then plus S11 times M2. Okay, so that gives the forecast number. Then I fill this down. So just a reminder, basically I'm just taking all these coefficients, I'm doing the first one, and then there's nine more, and I'm all apply each of the nine more by the temperature and then all of the hours and then I get the forecast values and then what we want to do is we want to do the air column so the air column is just the sales number so equals this cell minus forecast and then I want to do the square of the air so that's all that is is it's this column raised to the second power okay I fill this down I fill this down, and the MSC is just going to be the average of all of the squared air values. So there we go, it's that average. So 50.111, take it back to mind tap, here's the model C, 50.111, let's check it, make sure it works. And there you have it. So that is how you can use the dummy variables uh, to help solve this problem and create a multiple regression model.